All right, everybody, let's do some exposing on these lying fact checkers, you know what I mean? And how they be trying to lie and cover up stuff and don't want people to see anything. Okay, so recently Dr. Kerry Medjiv had done a video, you know, talking about these vaccines. And then, you know, just the other day, uh, Joe Biden comes out, you know what I mean? And basically said everything she said, you know, but yet they try to fact check somebody and say what she was saying is untrue. So let's get into the clips. I looked at the pros and cons and it frightens me. And I want you to know about this. You need to be very well informed because this new vaccine is not like your normal flu vaccine. This is something very different. This is something brand new. This is something completely experimental on the human race. And it's not just about being a different vaccine. There are technologies that are being introduced with this vaccine that can change the way we live, who we are, and what we are, and very quickly. I think, and I think that will speak volumes. So for instance, Moderna is one of the front runners for the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, you should know that Moderna was founded um, by a person from Harvard, Derek Rossi, and this researcher actually was successful in taking some modified RNA and being able to reprogram a stem cell in the body and change the function of the stem cell. He actually made it genetically modified, okay? So you can, he proved that you can genetically modify something by using modified RNA. So they founded the company Moderna on this concept. It's kind of a new kid on the block, okay? It's not been around that long. In fact, it hasn't even made any vaccine for a human before. It's made no medicine for a human before. This will be their first run. You must know that Moderna was in the news recently because it really fast-tracked. It's, it's like the other companies, it's fast-tracking the vaccine. It's going from phase one to phase two very, very quickly. In fact, it's gone from phase one to phase three and it's experiments from March of this year until currently. I mean, that is unbelievable. It usually takes five or six years. How are they able to do this with the safety and efficacy data that we need? Yeah. High dose vaccine group, they got 100% of those people got systemic side effects, 100. That's only in the short side effect profile. In the low dose vaccine, 80%, 80% got systemic side effects. Now, we don't even know the long-term side effects from that. We would need a lot longer time, right? Maybe years. But we do know, based on previous animal studies of using this technology, that you're going to, ex you can expect possibly increased cancer rates, increased mutant genes, mutagenesis, also increased autoimmune reactions. Those are longer term reactions and that could be seen with this vaccine, but we don't know the data yet. Types of vaccines being worked on now. One is an RNA model that are done by two of the of the operations. I think Moderna and uh, um, I figure w w which one, w who has the other one. And the other is an adenovirus, which is a way to generate the immune system to respond. One changes the cell structure. The one that deals with the, cell, the, the, the mRNA, that requires two injections, and it requires to be stored at 70 degrees below Listen zero. Listen to what Dr. Medjev says now about the luciferase and how they're trying to use it to mark you, right? You know, so that you can be tracked whether or not you got the vaccine or not. Now, mind you, this is technology that, you know, we know that they're going to go towards the mark of the beast. Right. But anyway, listen to what she says about the Lucifer. So keep in mind that they already put the apps on your phones. You know what I mean? If you go in, you'll see on your telephones on if you got an Android or an Apple that it'll have the COVID-19 app on there, you know, to alert you whether or not you've been vaccinated or not. It's a luciferase enzyme. OK, they named it. They patented it luciferase. I don't like that name. Luciferase, because it has bioluminescent qualities, which means it can produce a light or it has a light source. And the, all of this would be under your skin and you cannot see it. Now, the luciferase is an idea because they want to make sure that you're vaccinated. They don't trust medical records. They don't trust you saying that you got vaccinated. They want to make sure. And they want to make sure it was successful, a, su a successful transfection, a successful gene modification. So when you get the luciferase enzyme, if you have a, an iPhone or a special app on the iPhone, you can scan over that area and 
it will give a digital code, a digital imprint, a digital pattern, something that will identify that you were vaccinated. It holds your vaccination record. It also gives you an ID, a number, a barcode, a branding, whatever you want to call it, a tattoo. It's all the same thing. You now become like a product. All right, so as you can see, Moderna is one of the companies that's supposed to be charged with developing this vaccine. And part of this vaccine is, you know, to be able to go in to your RNA cell structure and significantly change your cell structure. So, you know, they try to act like that it's not, you know, that this is not real and not true. That's why these fact checkers be trying to block everything. But also we got to get into who are they trying to target with this vaccine? So let me let you see the clips for yourself. Virus. Communities of color have been greatly affected. Would they get access to the virus first? How would that work in terms of the distribution of Americans being able to get the virus? Based on the proposal laid out by the experts I spoke of the day and the National Science Foundation is coordinating with the CDC and other agencies, they indicate that the first group of people that should get the a vaccine if and when it is available are people at the greatest risk and that includes everything from nursing homes to people with serious pre-existing conditions that would cause people to be in real trouble a lot of those people happen to be black and brown happen to be black and brown it would go first as laid out for me today to first responders doctors and nurses the people who most we're most needed to have available to deal with our crises, health as well as physical crises in, in our communities. And uh, that includes a plan to ensure that we swiftly deliver the vaccine directly to America's senior citizens in nursing homes. And it's uh, all set. We have our military lined up. Everybody's lined up. And we think that's going to go very nicely. We're very close to that vaccine, as there you know. There's specifics, and there's an administration of the vaccine plan that will be done in over 51,000 outlets, including uh, for particular attention to minority areas, over 14,000 uh, federally qualified health centers. And as the president just said, within the first 24 hours of FDA's approval, under an emergency use, uh, we will have vaccines being delivered within the first 24 hours. Uh, and it will be done at virtually no cost to Americans. Um, and uh, the terms of the, uh, the dosage, uh, there will be, an is it anticipated uh, that no later than January, all the top priority uh, people will have received the vaccine or be able to receive the vaccine. And so that kind of prioritization, which is the general prioritization done for all vaccines that are developed, particularly in a pandemic setting, it goes to the high risk people, the people with uh, other underlying conditions, uh, as well as first responders and people working directly in health care. And so that's going to be done very rapidly. Okay. Uh, earlier today, uh, Dr. Redfield confirmed that it looked like November, December, the first doses would be able to be uh, distributed. But then he said that the vaccine for the general public likely would not be available until probably next summer, maybe even early fall. Are you comfortable with that time? No, I, I think he made a mistake when he said that. It's just incorrect information. Okay, so we see. Who are the three people that they're targeting? The elderly, minorities, and the healthcare workers, right? Now, let's talk about and discuss should you believe and should you trust these people? Let's go into the history of them and their vaccines. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. Now, the world today has 6.8 billion people. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. hidden from public scrutiny that the experiments took place. Conscripted soldiers, prisoners, prostitutes, the mentally ill, and even orphans like Marta Oriana, Guatemalans used by the US government as human guinea pigs. Pues sí, 
No one gave their consent, and they were certainly not informed that they were being infected with syphilis and gonorrhea. ¿Quién dijo que tenían que ten tener estas inyecciones? Los americanos. Sí, los americanos fueron los que me pusieron esa inyección. So then you have to ask, did they go back into the community? Did they spread this disease? Did we really give the people of Guatemala syphilis? This is Tuskegee, Alabama, where the Guatemalan experiments were hatched. The site of America's most infamous medical experiment, which began in the 1930s and ran until the 70s, with the unambiguous title, Untreated Syphilis in the Male Negro. Here, doctors found African Americans already infected with syphilis and then left them untreated so that they could monitor their progress. They never told the men that they had the disease. It became a national disgrace. One of the doctors, John Cutler, still defended the Tuskegee study more than 20 years after it was exposed in the press and stopped, saying, These individuals were contributing towards the health of the black community rather than simply serving as guinea pigs for the study. Even then, Cutler didn't want his guinea pigs to be finally treated for the syphilis they'd carried for decades. It would be undesirable to go ahead and use large amounts of penicillin to treat the disease because it would interfere with the study. It was while researching Cutler's role in Tuskegee that Susan Reverby made the remarkable discovery last year that he was head of another, much more invasive experiment started in 1946 in Guatemala. I, I, I was just completely shocked. I had spent you know, nearly 20 years explaining to everyone that no one had been given syphilis in Tuskegee. And here was a study with the title, Inoculation Syphilis, done by this man who had been involved in Tuskegee in the 60s and then in the 90s is, a, is essentially justifying the study. And I was completely, I mean, I, nobody knew about this. I see him as an evil man because of the, the undeniable circumstances that when he was told to discontinue the experiments in the U.S. because they were illegal and ethically wrong, decided to look for a place where he could literally get away with it. Terry Collingsworth is a Washington-based human rights lawyer representing the Guatemalans who have emerged to file a class action lawsuit against the U.S. government. The fact that they went to Guatemala is partly at least due to the fact that everyone understood that Guatemala was a place where there were no rights for poor people or people in prison and that you could pretty much do what you wanted with them. So to take advantage of that kind of situation certainly multiplies the crime. Now, should we trust them? Absolutely not. Heck no. The bottom line is, you see, they let black men in, in Tuskegee, Alabama suffer for years when they had a cure, you know, just so they could study them like guinea pigs. And then they, when, they, when that study was stopped, you know what I mean? They went and ran their butts down to Guatemala to put uh, some more poor people and injected them with syphilis so that they could continue studying. So you see what I'm saying? These people, they're trying to find little technologies and stuff to better themselves. But they try to do it on the expense of, of, of black and brown people and older people and all this type of stuff. So when you really start to stop and think about all this, you start realizing they're not trying to save nobody. You know, just like Bill Gates said, they're trying to, they're trying to lower population A, B, you see what I'm saying? Who are they targeting? The elderly? You're not trying to save them. They are, they're almost ready to, to die. The, 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 the minorities, we know y'all ain't trying to save us. You see what I'm saying? And then when you start talking about the nurses and the healthcare workers and all of them, if you get them sick and all this kind of stuff, then you can have this thing to rage all throughout the land because your, your healthcare workers are jacked up. You see what I'm saying? So what you got to understand is these people are wicked and are evil, right? And if they want a plague, you know what I mean? They will sit up here and start the plague, right? And sit there and study and watch people die. So I'm just saying, you better think twice before you go trying to let these people give you a vaccine, right? You better understand, fall back, you know, I ain't taking nothing, you take it first. You care so much, y'all the ones that got all the money. Any other, any other time, y'all want to be the first ones to have anything first. So you take it first, you know what I'm saying? I ain't taking nothing, you know? And so that's just the way we're going to have to be. All right, God bless y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Hope this has been informative. You know what I'm saying? Pray about everything in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, Joshua the Christ. Y'all have a blessed day.